Evil Secrets Revelations from an ex-wizard Although the contents are not for the faint of heart and contain some shocking revelations, the lessons therein are fundamental and important for every Christian. Remember, there is no neutral kingdom and life is too short to waste time on perishable things that have no lasting value and significance. Let this experience serve as an incentive for you to love God above all other considerations and dedicate your heart completely to Him. It sounds like a fairy tale. Most would pass it for a creative, fictitious and surreal account of supernatural experiences, not to be taken literally. But this is a true confession. It's the account of a man who lived for over 20 years in a world of darkness and devilry. A man who knew the tricks and traits of the satanic kingdom like the back of his hand and is now ready to expose their dark secrets after receiving his freedom. Before you read, brace yourself. The contents are shocking but the lessons fundamental. The spiritual world is real. We are in a real battle between good and evil. And confessing Christianity is not just enough. We must commit our lives to God totally. This ex-wizard exposes his former kingdom. Before I continue, kindly subscribe to this gospel channel that brings you eye-opener testimonies. Background. My name is Jude Solomon. I am from the Kogi state of Nigeria and I'm 43. I was born into a family of seven. We are only three left. I don't know the whereabouts of the other two. My father was a pagan and one of the community leaders. He didn't believe in going to either church or mosque. He was among those who wanted to live their own lives in the sentiment of their own understanding. As for me, I didn't care for any religion. I just lived my life the way I liked it. I had the authority of my own self. No one told me I should do this or that. The sentiment from my own childhood was that I believed in self-government, self-principle of living. I just wanted to live my life. Nobody should displease me and I won't displease anybody. The Initiation When I got into the University of Aloran, Quera State, I studied science laboratory. At that time, I didn't know about living without a girlfriend. So, I had many affairs with girls. In this process, I came across a lady who initiated me. You will not be told you are going to be initiated. You will just have an affair with the person. But she knows you better than yourself. She can tell much about you, your whereabouts, your physical and spiritual backgrounds. They have been monitoring you. In the spiritual kingdom, they monitor people. They see your star, your glory, everything regarding your living. There is no area of your life that is not being studied. It was after my initiation that I got to know I've been initiated by having fun with her physically. It's through a sexual relationship. When you are initiated, they will submit your sperm into the kingdom. That has given them room into your life. A bloody contribution. I began to see myself in a strange area I did not know. It started from a dream. They will be asking you to bring something. You have to pay a tribute, which is blood. You will see it as if it's a dream, but it's a reality. It will only become clear to your own understanding when you have paid with that blood. It started with an accident. I found myself involved in an accident inside a car in a dream, but it was a reality. A week later I was in a car and had an accident. Many people died but I had no injury. That is the first level you enter. You begin to observe that now you are no more just a physical being. That is the process by which you find yourself in the spiritual world. Joining a cult. In this process, I joined a cult, the Agu cult. The same girl will take you to the cult. You need protection. They will begin to threaten your life, saying that you need to protect yourself by joining this cult, though they will tell you it's a gang. You have to do an oath. The oath involves physical blood. They are the ones to bring blood, so you take an oath that you will not betray them. Then you drink the blood. That is another empowerment. By then you will begin to cause crises in the school. You begin to shed blood by using an axe or gun to kill people, especially confronting members of other cults. Whoever you kill, that blood is contributed spiritually and increases your level. So both the spiritual and the cult are working hand in hand. There is no cult or herbalist that is not working hand in hand with the spiritual world. That is where they get their powers. You don't invoke powers naturally. It's from the spiritual world and it will now manifest in the physical. Another world. I began to observe physically that I can sleep for two or three days. You may come in and ask what happened to this person, but I am not there. 
I am not lying down there but I'm in the other world. You are lying down physically but you are there spiritually. People will think you are sick or sleeping. Everything you see in the physical, there is something happening spiritually. Before it can happen physically, it has happened spiritually. Before anything will happen to you, it will first of all manifest in the spirit world, because that is what controls human beings. That is, your spirit being controls you. That's why sometimes when you are thinking about things, you will begin to have three different thoughts. One will be whispering to you gently, one will be giving you a harsh command and the other one will be saying, I don't know the one to do. The one speaking harshly with authority is not from God, the one whispering to you gently is from God. Your own is the one asking, which do I choose? It's now left for you to decide. Biological blood, I was asked to bring my sisters, so I thought it was to initiate them. Once you are initiated, you can initiate others, by sleeping with them. The power with me was that of causing accidents. I was directed to go there with them. We entered the car together to Aloran. In the process of coming to Aloran, we had an accident. The two of them died instantly, and many other people died. I was hospitalized. I was not really injured physically, but they will make you like someone in a coma. They know what they are doing. Fake coma and spiritual carriers. People will think you are in a coma and they will carry you to the hospital. Most of the people that will carry me to the hospital are not human beings. They will come in the midst of multitudes like human beings, and come and pick me, this is my brother, let's rush him to the hospital. They walk in the ranks of human beings. They may enter into somebody to go and use the person for that purpose. The person may finish doing what they want him to do and he will begin to ask what have I done. He doesn't know. Most of the people after the deliverance, they ask, what happened? They don't know. They will enter into a person, carry me to the hospital and after two or three days, I will be released. In that process, I lost my two sisters. I was promoted. A ladder of blood. In the period you are lying down in the hospital, you are in the spirit world. Physically they say you are in a coma but you are in the spiritual world. That is where I saw my two sisters. Anybody you kill, you will submit their blood, you will see him or her physically over there. They are the steps of a ladder. Each person killed through you increases your steps and each step you take is a promotion. You will be given more spiritual power, and be exposed to more things of the spirit. Demonic anger. I received two powers, because it was my two sisters. I was given a transformation and I was given anger. Then I was very quick to get angry. I will get easily offended because the spirit in me was pushing me to get angry. When you step on me or offend me, you will make me angry, I will definitely do something involving your blood. Like if the person is pregnant, you can take the pregnancy, the baby inside the womb, and give her a stone, or plant a fibroid in her. If people are not spiritually alert, you will cause much damage to her. Spiritual sickness. When you see anybody discovering a fibroid, or having symptoms he is not used to, don't leave him or abandon her, saying, it's a common thing. It's not. You don't know the affliction or the kind of person she has encountered that has poisoned her life by anything planted in her body. That thing will begin to eat her gradually. Gradually she is dying. Many afflictions you see today are not natural. There is nobody that is born with sickness. Sickness or affliction are diseases today. We call it gift in the spiritual world. You go and give this person a gift. That gift will begin to trouble him. I will still advise the people. It's not everyone that gives you a gift that you should accept. Many of the gifts they give to you physically are spiritually possessed, a point of contact whereby when you take it to your house or put it on your body as clothes or eat it as a food, it will affect you. Transformation. I can change from male to female, both physically and spiritually. When they have monitored somebody and want me to get them, they will come to you physically to give you instructions. You and I could be looking at this wall now, and they are giving me instructions, but you will not see it. That is why some people, you will just be discussing with them, but they will not be hearing what you are saying. You will think they are thinking of something, but they are busy listening to their master giving them instruction. So they will give you instruction. For example, they know your girlfriend. Every girlfriend you have, they know her. I will transform into your girlfriend's image and come to you physically. The appearance will be exactly the same. Spiritually, 
They will make sure the girl can't turn up. She can't come that way when you are there sleeping with him. That's how I can initiate men as well. Spiritual initiation. In the spiritual aspect, you can initiate someone in the dream. You will just observe. There's somebody sleeping with you, having an affair in the dream. The appearance of the person they will bring will be familiar to you, maybe an ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. You just use their image to go to him, if you observe the physical is tight. We also go to the beach or swimming pool, it's another point of initiation. Before you will be convinced to go there, there is something they have planted in that water. When you are swimming, water penetrates into your system. Your skin is open, so the things that have been planted there will be transferred into your skin and it will affect your blood system. Immediately you come into the water, they are seeing you in the spiritual world. It's like they are baptizing you. The more you initiate people, the more it increases your position. Tempting tactics. To bring down a spiritual person, they will make sure they first weaken him or her. He will just get tired, exhausted and he will not pray before he sleeps. And they will tempt the person to commit sin. They will push the person to drink. Some people will enter into a beer parlor. They only take one bottle of drink, but you see them more intoxicated than the rest of the people. That bottle you drink is not one bottle. An agent is there who will take all the drinks others are drinking and put them into that person's belly. In this state, he commits sin. He has gone against his God. Or they will entice you to blaspheme against God or have you develop a high sense of pride in yourself. They will bring some ladies around you to manipulate you, to seduce you. Where do the girls come from? The kind lady that comes into your office, who is she? Gradually she just begins to control you. You feel seduced. You go out and ease yourself. Before you come back, what has she done in your office? You will be pushed to lock the office, then you commit fornication or immorality in your office, and you say nobody is seeing you. If you close the whole office, do you close the eyes of God? The power of monitoring. Sometime later, I submitted my brother. They asked for him. It was through a road accident too, a motorbike. They commanded another car to hit the two of us. I survived. They found me on the other road in the gutter with minor injuries. He died. I was promoted again. I was given the power of monitoring because my brother was the closest person to me. One thing is that your emotions will die. You don't have any emotions. I didn't have any emotions for any human being. I didn't have time for human beings. It was not only my brother who died in that accident, but the thing that will crown you is if it is your own blood. With the power of monitoring, when someone is coming towards you, you will know if this is a human being or a spirit. You will see it. Satanic symbols. Every kingdom has its own symbol. Witch doctors are different from witches. And there are some people who are under the witch. Possession. Witchcraft is tormenting them, but they are not possessed. The one that is a witch, he will have his symbol. It will be like a garment on him or her. If it is a witch doctor, the symbol will be on his face. For some, you will physically be seeing them walking with their feet, but they are not. They are floating. Whatever you see from your kingdom, you would be able to understand. When a person is under witchcraft torment, you as a familiar spirit don't go there, because somebody is taking care of it. You will target those who are strong Christians. The fiery indicator. For Christians, there is a flame of fire that surrounds them. Such a person, you can't harm him spiritually. They will just be tempting him. When he falls into the temptation, that is the point of penetration. The fire reduces. Gradually, they will reduce it until it becomes empty and that's when they now strike. Even if you are strong, you will be tempted. But do you give in? How do you yield to that temptation? It is your yielding that matters. Everybody will be tempted. As far as you are in this flesh, you will be tempted. The difference is that God will make a way of escape for you if you are a Christian. Every Christian is equal, it's only we who call them names like, Pastor. But the flame of fire on each body is quite different. For some people, it's only on their heads, not on their bodies. Because they are not spiritually alert, you can attack him. They are confessing Christians, but not such in the heart. They may believe, but they are not ready to grow. You can see by the fire the level of the person's commitment to Christ. They will not send someone who is low in our kingdom to a big flame. There are some sets of people they send, 
level to level. There are levels in Christianity, there are levels in the spiritual world. Everything you are seeing in Christianity is happening in the spiritual world, in Jesus' kingdom. But in our spiritual, occult world, they don't call the name Jesus Christ. We say, the children of that man, we are not used to it. It's not something you call over there. The spirit of money, I was on the third level then. The fourth level was my dad. That's when my dad was involved. Immediately the accident happens, you are picked in a coma, carried to your seat and that's when they give you the new assignment. But they will give you an interval, a period so that people will not be suspicious. My dad was also involved in an accident. I was to celebrate my birthday and I convinced him to travel with me. We had an accident. I went into a coma, he died. I was then given the spirit of finance, money. When your finances are tampered with, your joy will be lost. They want to eat your joy. Even if you are a strong Christian or powerful pastor, when your finances are tampered with, you will be affected. So I had the power to tamper with other people's finances and cause businesses to collapse. When you see people acquire money, and they are proud, that is also the spirit of money at work. Tampering with destiny. There are some destined children whose joy they want to terminate. Not everyone is destined. Every child has their own destiny, but some people are more powerful than others. Those are our targets. In the power of monitoring, you see such people, the glory in them. The glory is like a star. The brighter the star, the greater the destiny. When you have a bulb outside a compound, you will see flies and insects flying from a distance to come to the light. If the light is not hot, the insects will cover it and everywhere will be dark. But if the light has heat, the insects will die. That is exactly what happens to every destined child. When you are a Christian, you have the fire, that is the difference. So if you are not a Christian and you are a destined child, destiny will be covered. They will not fulfill their destiny. We have various kinds of leaders. Some people could be leaders in their own family, liberation to their own family financially or morally, they are destined. But they can reduce him if the insects have covered his light. That is why you see some leaders after they have climbed to the top or are in a big position, at the end of their job or tenure in their office, what have they acquired or what do they have to show for it? They can still get to that position, but not achieve anything tangible because the light has been covered. The light wants to break out, but it has been dampened. At the end of their tenure, ask him, what did you acquire? What is your legacy? There will be nothing to write home about. The journey to deliverance. I entered the church on Sunday morning to be delivered. The atmosphere was not conducive to the demons residing in me. They were trying to get me out of the area. When they observe the area you are in is not conducive, they will come to you to get you out. It was a battle. I fought the ushers that day. I wanted to leave, but they did not allow me. So I told them I wanted to go to the toilet. When I came out and got to the steps, the atmosphere outside the church was also not conducive to my inner demons. There was a spiritual battle going on. I went back to church, unwilling to yield. When they started to worship, it was like a loud bell ringing in my ears. In the process, the pastor came out. He prophesied, there was a strong man here in our midst. I knew he saw me. Before he began the prayer, he said that there were some unwilling spirits, people that were unwilling to yield, that we should first of all pray for such people. As the prayer began, it was like a fire was burning all around me. I didn't know when I came out. I just found myself outside my chair. It was like when you throw someone in the hot oil. I later saw myself somersaulting and the spirit left me. I actually felt it come out. The pastor prayed over Mr. Jude and disconnected him from the powers of darkness. Afterwards, everything became normal. I could see things normally. My emotions returned and I started regretting. I felt like a human being. I began to feel sorry for the people who had died. I began to reason that really I have committed sin against humanity and against God. Advice to Christians. When you want to serve God, serve Him in truth and in spirit. If I may quote right, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Forget about other things. Your mentality first should be the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not by physical appearances. It is in your inner mind, your spirit being. How do you fortify your spirit being? By living in righteousness, in truth. Let your yes be your yes, let your no be your no.
sincerity, honesty, genuineness. Be committed to God, and moreover, what empowers you as a Christian is the name of Jesus Christ. Not only Jesus but Jesus Christ. Conclude it with that name Christ. When you travel all over the world, you see some people bearing Jesus, but nobody has ever borne Christ. For God has highly exalted his name and he has given him the name above every other name and every knee shall bow to that name. The second one is the blood of Jesus Christ. No turning back. Immediately after my deliverance, I received some inspirational songs. On Monday after my deliverance, I went to the prayer mountain. I didn't know how to pray. I've never prayed. I've never read the Bible. I met the evangelist there and asked him, how do I pray? What will I say? He told me, first of all, thank God for saving you and delivering you. You can begin by singing. I asked him, which song shall I sing? Shall I sing reggae or disco? He said, just open your heart to the Holy Spirit. I felt something like cold water pour on my head. I felt cold. Songs began to come to me. I began to see myself thanking God. I experienced joy, peace, and comfort in me. The song that came to me said, I have decided to follow Jesus, no turning back. I have taken my decision to follow Christ, no more going back. Mr. Jude stayed in the church for over a month to receive God's word and learn his ways. Following his rehabilitation and reformation, he was given N200,000 to restart his life on the right foundation, with God Almighty.